how, uh, how impressed have you been with, with what Greg Cronin's been able to do this year at Anaheim? I mean, he's, they're off to a great start. Yeah. If you look at their underlying numbers, all the things that he implemented with the Eagles, and then some are showing up with, with Anaheim. They've got a, they've got, I mean, they've drafted well for years. They've got a good group of young, skilled, talented players that are now breaking into the NHL. So I'm sure there's lots of teaching, but I mean, they've done a nice job. Their, their defensive numbers, their breakout numbers, they got everything that you kind of staples of your game that you're trying to clean up and make sure they're climbing in the rankings from 32nd to first is, I mean, they've improved on all of it and it's showing in their play. Getting good goaltending because they know where their breakdowns are coming from. Their shooters are scoring. They're a dangerous team. You no, know, Manson, today, is, it, is this more of a day-to-day -day thing or is this maybe longer term? Yeah, day-to-day, -to -day, I would say. Yep. Upper body, lower body? Upper. I think there are some obvious um, maybe challenges or concerns when you're facing a team that's coached by someone that used to be in the organization. Um, but what, if any, challenges, concerns do you have in training this game? That you uh, none when it comes to that. I mean, I think that the game is so well scouted now. The teams are knowing exactly how you're going to play and how you want to play going into it. They know your identity. They know the hot spots on what they got to be aware of and they also know the areas where they think they can expose you and, and um, I mean the amount of video that the coaches are watching now and how easily accessible it is I'd say that when it comes to that I don't have any any concerns. In talking with guys in the room it seems like they all appreciate the energy that Ross Colton brings especially after scoring a goal or just you know whatever yeah. he does that's positive. Do you feel that as a coaching staff do you like guys who show their emotion on their sleeves like that? Yeah, I mean, the most important thing is what they do between the whistle, but he plays the game with passion and emotion, physicality, you know, like it's, an, it's another guy that kind of gives you the same type of feel as what OC does when he goes on the ice for a guy that's been around. If you're looking for a comparison, it's, I mean, they're in it to win it. They're not just, um, you know, they're not easy to play against. They're going to make it tough on you every chance they get, and they're going to give you everything they got when it comes to the, the effort and, um, determination needed in hockey. Seeing Anaheim come back late in games, how do you count yep. that and how do you capitalize on a team on the second leg with back to back? Well, you got to start. I mean, it's not easy getting your energy up after a back to back. Um, some, you know, having said that, sometimes we, I feel like we play better. <laughs> so uh, I don't think you can count on them not being invested and not skating. I think they're a young team. It, it favors a young team. I think that that continues to play games. When it comes to their comebacks, I mean, they can, you know, they again. I touched on their talent and their ability to open up the ice and being able to play and, and create scoring chances. Uh, you got to continue to play your game. You know, I think that's today's NHL. If you try to go into a shell or sit back and and um, uh, think the game's going to be easy going in the final 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, like teams are going to come at you and they're going to put on a push. And they've certainly done that with success this season. So when you, if you're able to carve out a lead, you got to continue to play your game. And the most important thing probably with that is not feed into their transition and give them easy chances. you got to take care of the puck. you gotta, you got to force them to defend and spend some time in the D zone. You were until like pretty sturdy on the fourth line last game. What jumped yeah. out about his debut? Brought exactly what we thought he would. You know, veteran, experienced NHL guy that has bought into his role and knows exactly what he has to do. I think he fits the mold of our fourth line really well, and he played it to a tee. How important was keeping him in the organization after you guys initially made that? Well, yeah, I mean, it was really important. I mean, we liked him a lot. Obviously, you run out of forward spots. You had Tufty, great camp. Kivy ran to great camp, amongst others. Um, you run out of spots with guys you can keep. So, um, you know, he thought about it. He searched around, see if there was an NHL job open. Um, like the scenario that we had, you know, I think we, we just expressed to him how much we liked him and how much we feel like he fits a, a mold of, of our bottom six and that he'd be able to come in and help us if there was an injury. And here we are, right, a few weeks into the season and he's getting an opportunity. Cogliano, was that morning skate out there? Is he going to be back tonight? Yeah, possibly. Good. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you, guys.